Hello and welcome to the Holy Hour Podcast. Welcome, my friends. I am Gavin, and I hope you're doing good out there. Thanks for joining us again for a wonderful episode. We're going to kick things off tonight with a quick praise to our Patreon crew to kick things off so they're not always buried at the back of the episode there. So just want to let them all know that I adore them and appreciate all the support, of course. And if you want to be uh, part of our Patreon, you should please check out patreon.com slash the Holy Hour podcast. See what's going on over there. You might just be real into it, and that would be great. Um, for those that are already on board, a quick shout out to loyal Patreon patrons Donna, Craig, Jeff Hilton, Jeff Cortland Jones, Suzanne, Ben, John, Allison, Alan, Dione, Namicio, and Danny. And apologies, usually my son Henson's been reading. He he since has been turned into a robot and blew a power converter, so he's down at the shop right now. But he'll catch up with us next time and uh, continue his great work. Um, also, Kate runs CureThreads.com. It's an absolutely brilliant website where you can satisfy all your Cure shopping needs. Uh, she has all kinds of original Cure-inspired designs available over there on everything from t-shirts to coffee mugs to flip-flops for summer even and uh if you want to stick with the simon gallop theme hint hint that's what this episode's all about there's a thick as shit shirt even over there like the one he wore when was that around uh, 2000 maybe around blood flowers so go check it out carethreads.com lots of great stuff uh scott kruger is a co-host of a podcast called sarlacc digest you've heard him on this show and hopefully you'll hear him back on this show before too much longer um they have a wonderful star wars podcast and uh what are we about three episodes into obi-wan we should be at this point and um yeah can you tell i'm recording this in advance i think it's gonna be awesome i can't wait to hear what these guys in particular have to say about it so go on over to starlight digest join them live on youtube wednesday nights 8 p.m pacific standard time and hear all their thoughts and analysis of this wonderful new show and past star wars projects as well as all the rumors and things coming up there's tons on the horizon so catch the replays if you don't catch the live show everywhere you listen to podcasts and uh, if you want to go have some Cure Talk and you just happen to be in Calgary, it might be a pretty good chance that you could catch up with Lisa at Dickens. It's a pub slash venue up in Calgary. And uh, they have a lot of cool stuff on their calendar. So go to DickensYYC.com. June 11th is a retro prom dance night. June 15th is Six Degrees of Movie Trivia. All kinds of bands are playing, so keep your eyes peeled on that, and keep your eyes peeled for their live streams on Dickens YYC on Twitch. And another past guest slash Patreon faithful is Matt, and he would love to remind you that donating blood is an easy way to help out so many people in need. Please check out the Red Cross Blood Donor app. It makes it easy to find a location, schedule an appointment, and donate a little of that sweet, juicy blood that you got flowing through your veins. So help somebody out and donate. And you all know Chaz. Well, he's always whipping something up lovely over there at 17secondshirts.bigcartel.com or follow his Instagram at 17 underscore seconds to find the latest designs that he has up for pre-order. There should be some cool wish stuff like floating around out there so act fast if you're just hearing this now um because that's usually how it goes aside from the occasional leftover when these are gone they're gone so uh, check out what he has for pre-order and don't miss out be the coolest cat at all those cure shows coming up in the fall and also check out his podcast the excommunication station where he examines the life of growing up in the church and our buddy antonio who's also on this episode again with us uh he has a wonderful podcast called the nobody speaks podcast and uh, both of those can be found everywhere that you listen to podcasts so on that note what do you say should we kick off this birthday celebration for our man simon gallup right here on the holy hour let's do it Hello and welcome to the Holy Hour, the bi-weekly all-cure podcast. It is another festive episode, and I am joined by Chaz and Antonio. Thank you, fellas, for joining the party again. 
How's it oh, going? Thanks for having me. Of yeah, that's, we've been eating a lot of cake lately. Yeah, man, I'm just starting to pack on the pounds here. This tux is not even fit me anymore, but uh, I was thinking hopefully we could get away from this anniversary talk, but I guess this falls in the same category, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm still naked, by the way, so all right, yeah, the the birthday. nothing's changed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is a uh, special birthday episode for the one and only Simon Gallup, the most beloved co-member of the care i think at this point probably i think everybody has a sweet dear spot in their heart for simon and uh this is one that i was hoping to put out uh back on his 60th birthday a couple years back but uh i was like mm, you gotta do this shit right if you're gonna do it and 61 rolled around i was like mm, i don't know man people are gonna get picky <laughs> uh, so here we are we've got it lined up 62 is a good <laughs> safe nice just a chill birthday, you know. Yeah, it's not like over, yeah. over the top, yeah. but we're gonna we're gonna double thirty one. Yeah, so we're, we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> do our best to honor this wonderful man and all his awesomeness throughout his career in the Cure and elsewhere. And uh, it just happened that um, we got some some Cure news today too. We're recording this one on. Uh, what is today? May 19th and um, Thursday. Thursday, yeah. So um, we uh, heard that the award show happened. I don't know if it happened today or I guess last night, I'm assuming, in, in yeah, London. Yeah, probably last night. So yeah. yeah. Press hit this morning over there, which was, I guess, later. Here. Yeah. So we thought what better way to kick off his birthday was than uh, give him an award. <laughs> so <laughs> talk about his award he got. So, <laughs> so basically what this thing is, it's the PRS Music Awards that took place in London, the Ivers Academy Music Icon Award. I'm assuming some other stuff happened. A mouthful. Yeah. That, that is going to be a heavy statue it of is. all that's on it. It's a giant yeah. plaque, you know? But uh, so, yeah, good More on More words in the Stanley Cup. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and awarded to Robert Smith and Simon Gallup. So it was a little odd. I didn't quite get the reasoning other than um, it seemed like it was kind of focused on the writing aspect and his contributions. But I mean, everybody's kind of throwing in demos too. So it's a little odd that, but yeah. you know, I'm not taking away I was away under anything. the impression this was a, this was a band award. Yeah. Nah, it was not? specific to those two. Yeah. It's very weird. It was like, I think they may have just got one. I didn't, I didn't quite catch if Simon had his own award to hold or if they got yeah. a share maybe it, it has know, to, maybe but... it has to do with like you know like the copyright not the copyright splits but the you know the publishing splits yeah. are probably mainly robert simon um yeah, he always gives everybody credit though on all the songs so yeah i don't he, know but yeah, yeah me, maybe it is let me ask you that as songwriters you you guys if yeah. if you're putting out an album and somebody else like, do you, do you collectively say we wrote this song or do you one person says that they wrote it or? Yeah, I mean, I you think know. you have to, you'd probably know the legalities yeah, more, Antonio, it, but. It, it really depends on on how you, how the band comes kind of to it when they're, when it's time to sign a contract. Okay. Um, right. You know, for instance, you know, I'm not going to go into specifics, but of you know one of my best friends his band um like it was a 40 40 split in the publishing between him and one other band member because they mainly wrote everything mm -hmm. and then they just kind of they gave the other 20 percent of the publishing to the other three members just kind of split because those guys were it was more like all right here's the song and the stuff we have yes you're writing stuff to it but you're really only adding like you know, the sprinkles on top of the fancy cake. Yeah. 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 So, you know, but it's decided those, by the some, bands for the most part. Yeah, it's decided so it's, it's really decided not, by by the bands and, and when you're going to do that publishing deal on how it's set. You know, there are some guys, you know, where, you know, you're even you've been in the band forever and you're putting it on the writing and you don't get any of that because you're just a hired gun. Yeah. Like that recently just happened to uh Sergey. Uh, the bass player of Quicksand, who was in Deftones yeah. for over a decade. And finally, yeah. he was like, make me an official member. I've been adding to the writing. And, and, you know, it was time for his contract to be up because they just contracted him as a kind of a hired gun, even though he was writing his stuff. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, someone like him, like he would get an award for playing on it, but he wouldn't get an award if there was an award based on writing because he technically wasn't. Yeah. you know a, a part of that so it's all how it's divvied up by the members at the time which is why you get so much beef when certain bands break up or yeah. like yeah. issues yeah. you know where like certain band members you know like axel owned the name guns and roses yeah yeah they they all would get awards for writing it but you they only he could use the name because yeah. he went and did that you know and so, that's yeah, Robert's always been very clear about that's why they're all for the most part credited to everybody that's in the band at that time. Mm -hmm. Even Lowell for disintegration and stuff is on there. But uh, yeah, but even though the writing credits are there, the the, the publishing split might be drastic. Yeah, yeah. Probably you know, where it might up. be like, you know, like I said, like maybe ten percent, you know, to each, you know, right. guy and you know, because yeah, they did have a writing aspect to it. But even in, you know, the article that came out, like Robert talks about, like the writing process goes back and forth between him and Simon sending each other stuff. Yeah. So I have a feeling they get the song to where it's like 75 percent of an idea and then they give it yeah. to him before yeah. everyone so, else. Therefore, making them the probably the the chunk of I would assume, yeah. you know, yeah. Which is cool because, yeah, in this uh, awards thing, and it's followed by the NME's write up that came out, um, which kind of has two parts that will break down where it does kind of talk to Simon quite a bit, which fits with tonight's mm -hmm. theme. And like you're saying, um, I'll just pull up that quote there where it's. Um, says, yeah, speaking of the acceptance from their award with Gallup, from whom he has been part of the Cures lineup since 79, respectively, Smith explained that the prize meant what the prize meant and why their songwriting collaboration works. It is a strange one, says Robert. I was thinking about it when we were walking up to collect the award. It felt strange to be leaving the other three at the table. Um, we got an NME award. So then he talks about the headline award where they all went up. Um, for me, it's a really love. It's really lovely that Simon is up there with me. It's criminal really, because he's been there all the time. Um, as for how they work together when penning material, he said with Simon, we send demos back and forth because I write the words. I decided what songs are going to progress and which ones aren't. Often it's the case that with hindsight i picked the wrong songs which he's just being <laughs> self-deprecating there <laughs> yeah. like, come on robert uh, I've, I've just finished doing the wish remaster and there are yeah, so <laughs> i just finished stop. it <laughs> stop check we can check it off on the uh, bingo part yeah <laughs> um, so i just finished the wish remaster and there are so many of simon's demos that never got past the demo stage and remained instrumental purely because i couldn't think of any words for them that's really sad because some of them were really great they're all coming out as instrumentals, and I think there's about 36 unreleased songs coming out on the package. <laughs> 36. Uh, it won't be on vinyl then, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, well, it could be a four... Five, 40 four discs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, that's the same every time that we do anything. There's always loads of music, and a lot of it is Simon's, and I just run out of words, so... So it is a bit more of a new perspective on things where, you know, I always yeah. got the idea that everybody just had like a handful of demos and, you know, bring them in, but I didn't really realize Simon's really outweighed that much. And, you know, so maybe it is. Could, could you feel my eye roll from here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, <laughs> you haven't even got me right the, in the uh, face. We haven't even got to the new album updates. So, yeah, this was all. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I won't. I honestly won't yeah. believe it until. It's actually up for pre-order. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, we'll not believe it until then. I thought it was finished he's, already. He's too, not even going to tell us. We're just all going to wake up one morning and we're going to get a Spotify alert that there's a new album. <laughs> so, uh, Don't tease so yeah, me. that's pretty cool though on the Simon side of it that you know he, he's being called out and I don't know. That's funny as I'm saying this out loud now. Maybe it's that uh, <laughs> throwing him a bone from whatever pissed him off last year. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like give him an award. Give him an award. <laughs> It, it gives me a little bit more of an understanding of what could have possibly happened. Yeah, if he maybe. really has been this much of a big part of the songwriting process, and clearly Robert is the reason why this record is not out yet, they might have just finally he might have just finally come to him and been like, "Dude, I've 
giving you all the shit. What the fuck is going on? And he got might have gotten frustrated yeah. a few whiskeys in and said, fuck <laughs> off, you yeah, know? I'm like, done with it. <laughs> yeah. Right it's off. Off. So it's like, it's okay, it's cool. We'll give you a PRS <laughs> award and <laughs> everything will yeah. be better. You... And it's gonna be out by October, I yeah. promise. So yeah, I guess the crash course on the non-Simon specific updates from this was yes, he, he did once again say that they're doing the tour and it starts in October and it will be out before for them um shakira apparently it, her is a cure fan yeah. and it's her favorite band of all time i know that's <laughs> i was like i was like, I was right. like what cool. I, I looked at melissa i'm like babe shakira's favorite band's the cure yeah, and her hips that, don't yeah. lie yeah, yeah it's it's a, <laughs> um he did say this was the worry paragraph here it says um yeah it's going great it's almost finished he says reeves uh, our guitar player came over from america for the day just to finish a couple solos i've got to finish a couple vocals still I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> this is essentially, it, it's a 12 track album and it's there. It's kind of half mixed, half finished. Like five minutes earlier, he just said, it's like, oh, it's done. It's completely yeah, ready. Yeah, we're going to gonna have it before October, but it's, but <laughs> half the vocals and half the mixing is done. <laughs> so uh, he said, it's a weird thing. Um, over a couple of years, you know, it, you start picking at it more and more. Then he's just saying, it's going to be relentless, heavy, dark again still. So that's all sticking um yeah you know, other i think you said more di- on the disintegration side than the wish side yeah right? um this time he was leaning a little towards the <laughs> second album that's the popular one seems like that's fizzling out at least for now anyway he said there's a handful of really good songs i kind of fallen out of love with some of the others though so i have to go back and and record another four or five maybe um if if it gets finished <laughs> it's very upbeat and it'll be the flip side to the <laughs> so now we're already back to if that one even comes yeah. out so uh that was gonna so come we'll, out in 2035 yeah let's not we'll just we'll focus on the one like we originally said and then he just kind of topped it off with the uh, the gigs this fall he said they are going to be a little bit shorter it sounded like he wanted to keep them real long but the band was like, let's trim this back. But he was saying still two and a half hours, not three hours. So I think yeah, it was still... like, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to trim off a, uh, what they're going to trim off an encore. Yeah. I mean, yeah so exactly. what, what encore. And, uh, yeah, so that'd be it. And he said he wasn't going to totally overstack them with new material because, you know, everybody wants, nobody to wants to hear that. Yeah. Especially if they haven't and, heard the and album. Because, <laughs> so, because, we just want the new the, album. We don't want album, to hear it live. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> the album's literally going to drop in the morning of the first show because he's like going to push it to the very yeah, latest point. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, but, clearly uh, he doesn't yeah. care about breaking his word or his promises. Yeah, so. you know. So. And I and I I'm gonna assume that we can uh we're gonna just take it as a digital uh release. Yeah, because I mean I kind of assume they were already in the vinyl waiting line at this point. If he hasn't finished mixing, if, he, if he's not in the vinyl waiting line now, he's not gonna be in there for like a year. Unless and they've half, got so. like a placeholder or something, you know, like we're gonna yeah, the cure, so, maybe. Yeah, but it seems like they would have enough pull. But I, you know what? It's funny. I don't even know. Like what? Still not enough. Time. What label is it gonna come out of? Yeah, I don't even know who they're even... contractually labeled to. Yeah, at this point. yeah that's I still it's been... think it's geffen right you would think, think it's or at least some know. you know connection to the universal since they're all owned by universal yeah <laughs> but yeah. um yeah i don't know though you would think it would have or even just he would have just admitted that he's producing it all i'm assuming at this point because he hasn't said any other person's well, the, name or anything so the link on the website when you go purchase stuff uh-huh. you can either go to the cure store or to the universal music website yeah, and you can get you can get like records and stuff from there. So like I'm gonna assume still... it's through Universal and whatever subsidiary they're gonna yeah, so. use to put it out. Sure so. tone versus yeah, yeah so. tones. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe so. Who knows? But uh, that'll be hopefully uh, come to light at the end of the year. There, so we won't dwell too long on that since this is Simon's uh, big night and everything. We want to make sure that he's still glowing from that award that he got. Uh, we're going to definitely have to address some Simon fashion at some point, but at this award show, he was definitely rocking some amazing pants. I don't know if you guys saw that, but they're very like tight kind of spotted tight pants. (laughs) 
<laughs> now I gotta look. Hold on. Yeah, you guys. I know. It I'm up, looking yeah. this up now too. I'm like, wait, look at good now. So I was just like, yeah. oh wow, all right. So, uh, he likes his tight pants though, so I guess it shouldn't be too much of a shocker. Yeah, he's kind of. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. What was the name of the award show? Hold on, here it is. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta, hold on. So I feel I feel weird that I'm. Oh, okay. I can. Well, yeah. Well, oh wow. Hey. <laughs> you know. You got armadillos in our trousers. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're like wow, they're like polka dotted. They look like they're like spandex. Yeah, that's kind a, of yeah, they did. This was uh, his biker right. pants that he just had, had gotten off of a ride there, and <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely like a fine wine kind of with age, and you know, I think his worst fashion era was probably disintegration <laughs> with the little bow <laughs> peep hat <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm not sure what that was all about just a bad haircut he said but he really hung on to that thing for a while there it was so I, like, I tell you what though if Simon is is aging like you know like a fine wine Robert is the leftover grape because he kind of looks yes. like a a, a <laughs> California raisin sometimes yeah. these days. I love him, but I'm like, man, you're looking like a California raisin with a <laughs> with my great aunt. The grape party. and the wine, you need it all, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. What do you uh, what do you, what do you guys pick as your favorite Simon? Like yeah, what what era? era? Like just look wise. Look wise. Mm. Wow. That's, uh... I definitely dig that early like '80s look that he had going on, where you look like you could be in the Misfits. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. that like full like kind of almost like rockabilly horror esque. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah, the full pretty... the full on eighty like mid '80s Simon was a not with the humongous hair. Yeah, with the humongous hair and then the hat kind of holding it down in the middle <laughs> and like the the big suit jacket kind of thing, you yeah, know, yeah. was a little bit, it, it was almost too like, it was almost too tied to Robert's fashion at the time. And it was like, yeah. you know, there, there are some, there are some points where he looked like a lot like Nikki six. In yeah. The, yeah. In those, it was like, getting yeah. very like the Nikki glam six metal era. kind of thing. Yeah. Going on, on a lot of them. Uh, yeah. But so. uh, I think the like sleeveless, like, the sleeveless like denim vest rockabilly hair yeah. uh mm -hmm. simon when he kind of was rocking the um the like the that yellow base with the wolf on it yeah. i think that's my favorite era because he's like a little older grittier badass motherfucker you know and like, then like the quiff got like ginormous like what was that era at the end of like the 2016 tour maybe his big like pompadour on the it, it was getting like yeah, it, Johnny uh, how, Bravo how many shows <laughs> how many shows in 2016 do you think he wore that iron maiden sleeveless shirt yeah maybe because it seemed like every picture i saw him and he had that on i know the times i saw him he wore it yeah. so i love it when a band like, just has like one shirt they wear that whole tour and then you can like identify that was that tour yeah <laughs> yeah it's like it's you, the same you know shirt? knowing him he was like he was like he went and bought like every vintage one he could on ebay of the same shirt yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> or or they were made by like target and he just went in and bought like yeah. the whole sack of them yeah, and the, just, whole, like, and just the whole cut sack the cut the sleeves off, off yeah. washed them like 40 <laughs> times yeah and i think yeah, around like so. what was around blood flowers when it was like trimmed down he had like the big like sideburns he went very like wolverine he was looking very yeah. like, wolverine and that was kind of badass but uh I don't know. Probably... i'm i'm digging i i dig simon at the beginning and then right around like 2016 to now okay so i, I dig right. the rockabilly kind of look that he goes with and then like the the punkier look yeah uh, yeah. from the beginning not so. the sports yeah, pants that, of wild mood it, swings or he'd have like the uh... <laughs> it, it just sucks that like his worst fashion era was the band's best era yeah um, and, like, <laughs> right. and it didn't mirror like because robert's like completely mirrors and, yeah. like, like set a tone and his his fashion just was like whoa what the f like <laughs> are you joining like an australian like are you joining midnight oil yeah, or what is going it was on? very like, like a fucking <laughs> like the alarm yeah. or something it looked like it. yeah <laughs> oh, that's so yeah the, but the the uh the samurai ponytail is probably my <laughs> least favorite yeah yeah the long long hair gets a little <laughs> you know? weird on an old dude you know when you got the real long but uh yeah he's starting to look like, like at that point it's like all right steven seagal relax yeah. you know <laughs> 
Well, maybe that's a good segue <laughs> as we start our Simon story. We want to walk through the timeline of Simon's uh, life, I guess. There's not really much out there, so it won't be too drastically long or anything. He's a very uh, private man, it seems like. Yeah, yeah it's like, are we Numbers ever getting of... his book? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be an interesting one. And from people's fan stories of, you know, encountering him or anything, he totally comes off as like, you know, I think it's pretty well known. He's like super shy. You know, mm, keeps yeah. to himself, dude. That yeah, he seems you know, like an introvert. Yeah, despite his like just dominating on stage, you know, where everybody else is pretty much burning holes in their feet when they're standing on stage. <laughs> He's like all <laughs> over the place and like, but yeah. um, yeah, it seems like uh, of everybody's encounter stories, he was like, you know, Ooh, get away, <laughs> like wasn't really the dude hanging out, you know, shooting up the shit with everybody after the show so much. But um, yeah, him and him and Robert could be the two most i don't know uh in, uh, introvert or just anti-social rock stars yeah. like the, in, a, in a band together <laughs> like because you think of like the one two punches of like you know i don't know you two and in bono and like yeah uh right. steven yeah. tyler and and so, yeah to yeah and like all these all these duos that go hand in hand together yeah and keith richards and you know whatever yeah that's uh, true whatever the fuck his name is um I'm, I'm blanking, but you know, <laughs> you go through all these people and like, <laughs> yeah, it seems like one of them's always outgoing and one is like kind of reserved. Yeah. And, or like, and like with both of them, there's just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked yeah. about like what would be to meet them. And I'm just like, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if they would even talk to us. Yeah. Like, it just, yeah, there, seem... it'd probably be such an awkward that you'd just be like, <laughs> yeah, uh... yeah. yeah like, not, <laughs> not with them being like, <clears throat> get away from me like you asshole or anything like yeah, that it would just no. be like uh i don't really have anything and then say, they just go back know? to their conversation <laughs> and mumble yeah. into each other that was yeah, yeah, that's know. exactly how it was like too when i met uh jeremy enoch of sunday day real estate yeah yeah i was like i was like oh you know i was like you know diary is like such an influential record to me of all and he's like oh yeah yeah thank, thank, thank yeah. you <laughs> like kind of signed my poster and was just kind of yeah. like looking around and i was like yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, you would love to just be like a fly on the wall at the bar during their younger days when the two of them are just a few drinks in and getting loose and just see them get goofy and what their like dude hangout night would have been like. <laughs> are they like totally yeah. just cracking each other up? Or are they just kind of lean it in and mumbling to each other as they're drinking? You know, like what is the No, but it's it's it seems like, you know, when I read Lowell's book, like it seems like, you know, young younger younger robert was like sometimes would, would push the edge on thing and seemed yeah, a little yeah. fun fun and you know throwing beer bottles at 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 guys that were talking shit and then yeah. running you know what i mean like <laughs> scrapping I was and like, shit yeah, yeah you know like who knows i mean yeah. maybe it's just you know later in life i don't know but no, I, I mean you had kurt cobain did shit like that and then once he became a rock star he just didn't want anything to do with it and just kind of like yeah went, and you know Shot heroin. Deal. Well, like, oh, <laughs> I mean, we all have our our heroin in our lives. Yeah, yeah, that we shoot yeah. from time to time, holding our baby. But yeah. you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So, but I, I just, I, I don't know. I, uh, I, I think that he, it might have been something where he's a very reclusive rock star. Where he doesn't, you know, both of them are. Yeah, yeah for and, sure. Uh, Simon has his times where he's bursted out loud yelling or whatnot yeah, yeah. And, you see him getting you know, all giddy in interviews so, and stuff so i think he's still got it i just think they're both shy yeah and so yeah born in june 1st 1960 uh his parents were bob and peg and uh he was born in in duckshurst surrey they moved to hurley uh when he was one yeah, he has six. Uh, he's the youngest of six, so he has yeah. one older sister, three older brothers, Stuart, Dave, uh, four older brothers, Stuart, uh, Dave, Duncan, and Rick. So, um, and Rick is the closest in age uh, by seven years. So, the oh wow, they took the, a big gap there. Yeah, yeah, so he's one of those. I like, mean, youngest of six might explain that social aspect of his uh yeah <laughs> yeah 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 it's so, such, such a such a like death like 
I know that there's like psychological stuff that happens when there's such a difference between ages yeah. of like disconnect with, you know, siblings and whatnot. But yeah. like, yeah, that, that, that would totally Seven's track. A pretty big gap. Yeah. And, yeah. And yeah, it sounds like, you know, and Rick is the closest one and he's the one that's the most connected that we know already from uh, being the manager of later with the magpies and um, did the carnage visor videos for the, for the film there. Um, and uh, worked at the record shop and financed early Cure recordings, even pre-Simon in the Cure. So uh, there's a lot of crossover already there with Rick. And, Very cool. Um, so yeah, just in general childhood, not too many huge stories that came out. So hopefully he made that through fairly normal childhood. We don't really know um, too much until his teen years where he was a dedicated Kiss fan. So we, we, we won't hold that against him. But I'm, yes. Yeah, I'm going to say England in the, in the 60s and 70s. Uh, his childhood was not very good. But yeah, that's just probably my, not. That's my but, assumption. But at least yeah. there was no horrific tale that had to make it into the bio. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um yeah, who knows? Um, so around the, jumping to the teen years there, he uh, got a job um, working in a plastic factory. He always makes it into the bios there. So he worked in there for maybe two or three years, um, much like Donald worked in a plastic factory too. So I think they always <laughs> shared that bond and uh, hopefully... 70s plastic factory too could have been the healthiest environment how does he have not have cancer yeah i know he's like the healthiest yeah, one bro. <laughs> so. Dude, the stuff that he probably inhaled on a daily basis yeah so eesh. but um so like we mentioned he's rick probably, well, what's probably that? like a high every day though yeah so, yeah so. he's built up his tolerance <laughs> for the party life i guess <laughs> yeah. so uh, uh, like we mentioned, his br older brother Rick worked in the record shop there in Horley and started introducing Simon to the flood of punk rock singles that were coming out of London in the late 70s. Um, around this time, too, Must Simon. Have been so cool. Yeah, having that, that connection. Must have been so rad. Older brothers there. That's pretty, pretty rad. Um, you'll like this one there, Chaz. Around this time, Simon first became aware of a bloke named Lowell Tolhurst. Oh. And, uh, he was dating this girl that he knew, and she would often boast what a badass this Lawrence dude was. And he was a, he was a hard man. <laughs> so, so in the never more than one way. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, in That's the not never a drumstick in his those pants. drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the Never Enough book by Jeff Apter, um, Lowell said that Simon used to cross to the other side of the street when he'd see me coming. <laughs> he said that he once he got to know me, obviously that was far from the truth. But uh, yeah, Lowell had a pretty badass reputation, apparently. Even Simon was cautious around him in the early days. Um, <laughs> Lull, like looking at those earlier pictures of the band, does Lull does not scream intimidation? Yeah, at, no, at no, all. Really not. He 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 screams like fucking math nerd. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know I mean? you're like you're like that's the dude that should have been doing your homework for but, you. But keep in mind that's all a Lull quote from that book too. So this is all Lull telling that story. Yeah, true. <laughs> so, yeah. Not Simon's book. Simon musically uh, was self taught. He started on guitar actually and switched to bass short after uh, he would cite later on in interviews his base heroes would be Pete Way of UFO and JJ Burnell of the Stranglers and of course Paul Simeon from the Clash so they all seem pretty on par what you would expect Simon to be looking up to um, he said a forest in particular was very JJ Burnell so very cool. But uh, um, around he, this time, he definitely surpassed all those guys. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, Who's the first guy? The guy from UB40? Yeah, UB40. <laughs> <laughs> UTFO. <laughs> uh, UFO. UFO. Like, uh, kind of a, they credit them as being a metal band, but I guess it's more just like kind of classic Rocky. Sound I was just saying, yeah, it's, it's like before kind of, metal was metal. Kind of you know, like, tap you jitter, I guess so. it's like they, they played a show at Black Sabbath once. Yeah. So they probably no. just got labeled as a metal band. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, to look them up, heads of different. I was like, yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, also around this time, Lockjaw formed, and uh, they're a pretty rowdy punk sound, and uh, got signed surprisingly 
quickly to Raw Records. Simon said, yeah, they thought we were a good suburban band, but in fact, we were quite shit. <laughs> so, so, didn't think too highly of Lockjaw at the time. Raw Records put out their first single, though, Radio Call Sign, backed with the Young Ones. And um, it didn't make much of an impact, but their live shows were getting quite a reputation for being super rowdy punk shows and lots of stage diving, pogoing, kicking ass, taking names. From and, beer bottles. Yeah, yeah. So, so much so that they scored a, a gig at The Rocket in Crawley. And this would be the first oh. time Robert, I'm assuming, would be in the crowd there and just happened to catch the show and took note of them. And he would later say, they tore that place apart. And, <laughs> <laughs> in a good way. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so impressed Robert that uh, he started hanging out with them at the record shops in, in, uh, at Rick's record shop there, the shop that he Rick worked at anyway. And they started to get to know him. Lowell and Michael Dempsey all hung out with him there too. And uh, so around April 78, the Easy Cure had recently parted with Hansa Records and uh, set up a show with Lockjaw at a spot called Lakers. And Robert and Simon really hit it off at this show, hanging out till two in the morning, drinking together, just bashing around, becoming best buddies. And uh, they'd start making fun of Lowell, make fun of Lowell. <laughs> realizing <laughs> Lowell wasn't so badass after all. Maybe <laughs> and, uh, they'd start going to shows together too, seeing the Buzzcocks and the Clash and bonding. Um, uh, yeah, so glorious that. times there. Um, Lockjaw left Raw Records around this time too to pursue a more new wave post punk sound. And uh, at this point, start up a label, and they'd become the magazine spies. Uh, the label they would form is called Dance Fools Dance, and that was started by the brothers David and Rick. And um, so, yeah, Rick would do the promotions, and Dave would be the actual band's manager. And um, then they would cross paths again with Robert doing Magpie's 7-inch producing. Uh, the obtainers were on the flip side of that, too. And I always the, think that's like a, uh, it should be a ska band. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, seriously. The, the mag, the magpies. Pies, yeah, <laughs> I mean, magazine spies sounds way cooler. I don't know how they morphed it into magpies. It sounds like some kind of dessert treat or something. But uh, lots but, uh, of drinking. Yeah. So around this time too is with the. Um, the session happened for cult hero where, you know, mm -hmm. people have speculated in cure history that it was all a ploy basically to get Simon into the studio and Robert feel out what it's like to work with Simon. So they got this kind of side project thing rolling and hit it off even further. And of course, as legends have it around that time, Robert had all the 17 seconds demos ready to roll, brought them over to Michael Dempsey's house. And he was like, eh, I'm not mm, into it. I want to go more than me. I don't like it. Robert says, I want to go be a lay person somewhere. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Too moody. <laughs> So Robert says, fine, I'll take him to my new friend's house, Simon Gallup, and see what he thinks. And uh, sure enough, Simon loved the new songs and was like, fuck yeah, those are great. And uh, on the spot almost, it sounds like, Robert was like, cool, you should be in the band. You could bring along Matthew if that helps. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so they did, and they joined The Cure. And started playing shows, recorded 17 seconds, uh, it was a blast not working in the plastic factory, apparently. Um, see the 17 seconds episode for more details on this era. <laughs> um, it finally gets to do legitimate drugs and not, yeah, yeah, in not just huffing <laughs> melted plastic parts. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, got, we got any more paint cans laying around. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so, yeah, the dark era hits hard and fast for them. They tour, record, tour, record from 17 seconds through faith to pornography as we catch up to what we've been talking about with the anniversary talk of pornography and then we all know where the story goes from here where they actually make it through apparently the the recording process without any huge catastrophes but yeah, um the big tour surprise to us. yeah so i thought they'd at least be cracks forming at that point and maybe they mm -hmm. were but they still just kept it together um and even surprisingly when i was looking at these dates here uh the tour once they started what is it? The explicit 14 explicit moments or something yeah, is the actual name like that, yeah. <laughs> or the pornography tour. What's this called? Um, 
uh, it lasts two months, you know, pretty much playing every night, you know, so that's pretty good if you're playing all those songs and hate each other and you make it two months even, that's that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the infamous night though falls on uh, May 27th, which is coming up soon, the, the anniversary of that. So we should all go out and hit our best friend that night and get in a fight and <laughs> <laughs> in honor of Simon and Robert. Um, so yeah, over a bar tab, who knows? Like we speculated last time, is it ever really? But you're a bunch of punk rock goth kids, whatever you want to call them, drunk yeah. out of their mind, pissed off at each other, tempers are going to fly. Um, so whatever the case it all comes to a boiling point um, in France. They had three days off anyway, I think. I don't think they had to cancel any, so that was good. Robert goes home, and his dad convinces him, Robert, you must finish the tour. Go back and finish what you have started, son. Call your friend and apologize. <laughs> yes. Don't tempt me, Frodo. Call your little friend, Robert. <laughs> it is your destiny. <laughs> and sure enough, he listens. And uh, yeah, I don't know how I convinced Simon to come back, though. Really, it makes sense that his dad would be like, Robert, you owe it to these people. <laughs> but Simon could have been like, fuck you i'm done yeah. <laughs> but uh luckily he came back and then um yeah surprisingly then from june 1st to the 11th is the last stretch of the dates they had scheduled and it's 10 shows um pretty much all in a row um must have been super awkward oh um, yeah. yeah so <laughs> you're like traveling oh, yeah. around together after you totally hate each other you know you're just gonna totally implode on the last night and you gotta play 10 shows in a row any band moment stories you'd like to share, Antonio, where you could relate that just you knew the band was pretty much done, but you're just finishing no, your last stretch? I mean, or... Yeah, most of the, when that stuff it was happening, people were either, I mean, quitting like right then and yeah. then, walk it off, and that's kind of it. Or, yeah, I mean, but you know, I I guess I was never at the even probably at the point that they were at at that point. You yeah, know? like because so you know, it's almost like. I mean, we all have worked jobs that we've hated and just had to work them because that's how we were getting paid. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, it's like those 10 shows were 10 more, however many dollars in Simon's pocket. And it was probably like, all right, well, let me pocket all this and figure out what I'm going to do uh, after this. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, it's just like going to work and punching the clock when you don't like the people that you work with. We've all done it. Yeah. Just imagine those van rides. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's only three of them anyway. It's pretty tight, yeah. you know. And I'm sure they got yeah. the crew and stuff, so he's probably uh, hanging out with the roadies and stuff more. But at the same time, it's got to have been pretty awkward. Yeah. Do we have to listen to X-ray specs again? Yeah, <laughs> that's like the real root no, of the from problem. What I've heard of, like European touring, though, European roads can't take like buses and big vehicles, really. So even bigger bands end up touring in like small vans. Yeah, like that makes so sense. it it's you know at that point. Like, they were probably in a caravan of like two small vans, yeah, you know, like, totally. so, so he might've been able to be in one of the other ones. Cause everyone and everything probably wasn't fitting in one. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Well, it, it's gotta be like when you have like a fight with like your, your girlfriend or wife and you're, not... you're driving somewhere and yeah. you just have that awkward, just quiet, <laughs> quiet. <laughs> like you're days. leaning all the way over to your <laughs> yeah. door. It's yeah. More possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so they finally get to Brussels on that last 10th show there and that's the infamous where they play the set but then for the encore they all switch instruments Simon's playing guitar Robert's on drums I guess I don't know nobody ever says what Lowell was doing um, because there was the opening (laughs) band was messing around on the keyboards I think when you listen to the pictures maybe (laughs) look at that Fine, let, let me take your camera. I'll, I'll, I'll get this. <laughs> Gary Biddles, the roadie at this point, is on the mic, and he's just talking endless shit. You know, if you listen to the bootlegs of it, it's not quite as epic because they always make it sound where he gets up there and he starts saying everybody's a waker and fuck you and everything. And it just sounds like awful mess, and they're just dicking around. And um, apparently Robert threw the sticks at him at the end there, so it does kind of an abrupt ending there. And... I was surprised when I re-listened to the bootleg of it. The only thing I really did make up was just the fact that everybody boos at the end of the... It's like it just ends and they all, everyone's just like, boo! <laughs> so, <laughs> something must have not come over really well. Maybe just Robert like, fuck you, and threw the sticks and walked off or something. But I can't imagine anybody was really 
cheering to hear more of that at that point, you know, but, um, yeah, so that was it. They were dud for a little while. And, uh, that, that starts the, uh, Simon hiatus era that is very, uh, well known and, and worth analyzing in cure history there from end of, I guess, mid 82 to end ish of 84. So yeah, what, what does Simon do when he's on his own here? He, uh, Gets former mag spy Stuart Curran and good old Matthew comes back and they form the cry, which quickly becomes Fool's Dance. And uh, then Matthew leaves when it becomes Fool's Dance, from what I gathered. And uh, all the while, this is Gary Biddle's band that he's forming. <laughs> Gary Biddle's is always just <laughs> reoccurring as just the dude. <laughs> yeah, it's all Gary. forming the beds with all the leftovers of the carriage. And uh, it, is Fool's Dance the the best offshoot band of the cure i guess so. i mean Ooh. that'd take them over presence but presence is pretty much the yeah. same thing too that's gary biddles with lowell yeah. and some other dudes um so yeah i don't know and you know there i was gonna ask what your opinions were on fool's dance it's one of those things everybody kind of it's not bad yeah yeah it's just kind of man yeah, i feel I like mean, the the music's cool vocals aren't great but at the same time no not, but yeah yeah uh, it's more just the songs aren't really that catchy or go anywhere yeah. so it's just not they're, i mean they're okay for what they are it's just they they i know on one of the lps i have them it specifically says featuring lol or not enough featuring simon of the cure yeah on it like <laughs> up in the corner and it's just like, yeah, all like right. we gotta move this for <laughs> all yeah. it's worth <laughs> so, so yeah it's um you know pretty cool and i feel like if you walked into a bar nowadays and saw that you know just because it's very like typical cool 80s vibe you know but at the same time yeah. it would be like wow this is pretty rad what's going on here but yeah i was hoping when i when i first listened to them that they would have been more punky yeah just by like the pictures that i saw of them i mm -hmm. thought they would be a little bit faster but like yeah that was my I, whole thing it wasn't exactly what i yeah. imagined it would sound like so yeah. it's kind of like hmm. or post punky kind of like wire or something like that i would have been down yeah. with but yeah it's almost yeah, a little I've... too knockoff cure sounding if anything yeah it's just like, yeah. yeah cure light yeah <laughs> so, um so then you know they record you know all the singles and he does the Susie stuff and the gloves so robert keeps busy um it's hard to imagine too much of this fool's dance stuff filled up all this time for Simon, but uh, I guess that's what he was working on. And um, by, I guess it was late 84 and I read different things, but at one point they said it was Gary Biddles that actually <laughs> arranged the hangout with Robert and Simon at the end of 84. So oh, come on, let's just all get together. <laughs> which, <laughs> which technically was the worst move Gary Biddles could have ever done because they make up and he decides to reform the cure. So he's, I don't know if fool's dance had already called it a day at that point or what, but uh, he basically was like, yeah, I'm going back over to Robert's band. Sorry, Gary. But uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I just found a fool's dance uh, tour catalog tour okay. program oh really so yeah nice. uh yeah okay. i can send it to you guys but yeah it's uh it's pretty cool like the picture they have a like a press photo on this site they definitely looked cool they all look yeah they definitely they did had good um, hair and cool outfits <laughs> so, uh, um, so yeah, it was good that, that, that uh, quickly, you know, I, I don't think it took much work or convincing, um, Robert and Simon hit it off and seemed to be stronger than ever, even at this point. So whatever the hell they talked about and hashed out, um, it seemed to work because it's pretty smooth sailing for their whole relationship up until recent times, maybe, um, 88, you know, he's his actual best man at the wedding, um, you know, head on the door and to kiss me into disintegration, all that stuff pretty good times for the cure for the most part you know so i didn't really want to try to you know decipher all his personal stuff but a lot of it does kind of coincide with um things that actually happen in the in the band and whatnot but um somewhere in there he marries carol thompson which um mm -hmm. is uh maybe or maybe not the ones credited in this fool's dance party but it yeah, sounds like he'd sure been he with her for a while yeah and yeah. um so somewhere in there he marries her. Um, it's not Porl's sister, though. So that's something that um, actually Eden sent me a message to personally tell me that <laughs> when we had mentioned it in uh, 
in the Eden episode when we did I Children of the that, Cure. Yeah. And, um, you know, he was super cool about it, of course. And it was just like, yeah, it's just something that got out there early on. And I think because everybody makes the connection because Pearl's married to Robert's sister. Mm-hmm. So everybody just assumes everybody's married to everybody. To everyone else's sister. <laughs> but it is big, super fucking It's all weird incestual. Though. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> big sister swap parties. Yeah, you know? like, oh, Jesus, it's getting a little weird if it is true. Wolves um, in the corner just jacking off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the I think the weird, Jack Daniels. the extra weird part, I could be wrong on this too, but I remember what really confused me when I did look that up, because not all of them said it, but it is in like fucking bios where they say, you know, He's married Related. to Pearl's sister, yeah, and just because the name. But I think it is because Pearl actually does have a sister named Carol Thompson. Carol. It's just a different, yeah, it's just a different oh. Carol, I think. So, uh, wow, it's so very strange. But um, so anybody out there, for the record, not not his sister. And, uh, Eden was born in 1990, um, and uh, we all know Eden from being their bass tech and Violet Vendetta and played two shows filling in for Simon in recent years. Mm-hmm. Lily is all, is Eden's sister. She was born in 92, and it sounds like around that time or somewhere in there is when Simon and Carol split. So, um, And I don't even bring that up because that was... Um, around when Simon started to have hard times at the end of the Wish Tour there, or even beginning yeah, of the Wish Tour, it sounded like, I don't know if it was all relationship-based or yeah. just everything, but boozing hard, not eating, super depressed, um, separated, but then it sounds like he was also at least with his, would be his future wife, Sarah, around that time too, so who knows, wants to speculate Double crossovers, or, who knows, but <laughs> it could all be you legit. You rock star, we, you. We, we will dig in there, but um, yeah. So, dirty dog. Simon so definitely hits the hill, uh, hard spot for his health um, during the seven-month-long wish tour, which, Jesus, that's a long stretch. Um, he ends up missing a few shows by the end of it of a severe vitamin deficiency in Milano and on October 30th. Not too much vitamin D. That's the problem. Yeah, maybe <laughs> <laughs> he got that vitamin C shot, but was in a horrible mood. They said he flew home immediately the next day and went to the hospital. Um, wow. he was diagnosed with pleurisy. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's a lung membrane that becomes inflamed, um, gives you chest pains, hard to breathe, uh, kind of pneumonia uh, is part of it, I guess. Um, it was COVID. Yeah, yeah. So early, <laughs> early, what is it early called COVID. Again? Uh, pleurisy, P L E U R I S Y. You get it's like it from Morrissey. Plur- plur- yeah, you like get the, it from like listening a pain to Morrissey. Yeah, I guess that pleurisy, yeah. but pleurisy. <laughs> pleurisy. Yeah, it is plur- like Morrissey. <laughs> pleurisy. <laughs> Remind um, me again who filled in on base. Yeah, I got it right here. Left. Robert Suave. Um, and this Rico is the, Suave. <laughs> Rico Suave's <Yeah>. brother. <laughs> Married to Rico Don't Suave's start sister. any rumors, okay? <laughs> yeah, is, Come on, guys. This is where no the hate rumors. mail is going to start. Really, God damn it, you're making it all up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Robert Suave, and I might be pronouncing that wrong too, but that's how I took it, is uh, the bass player for the Associates at one point, but the Shellian Orphan, that's right. uh, who's the Wish Tour opener and a lot of crossover mm-hmm. there. Uh, stepped in and, and filled in a few shows. Didn't sound like it was a ton of shows. Um, and then even Simon, I think, came back at the very last couple shows, maybe, and finished it up. Um, but that was a weird era for the cure to wrap up everything because, you know, we all know after Wish is when, you know, everybody started kind of like calling it a day with the cure. And Simon wasn't even sure if he was going to come back for a little stretch of time there. So we had Porl out, Boris goes, Simon's even out. So, of course, at the early stages of wild mood swings prep, it was like just fucking Robert and Perry, <laughs> like the only mm-hmm. two left. So, but, uh, sounded like Simon once again, you know, rebounded pretty quickly though. Um, I think it was more just getting his health stuff on board and not, you know, any being done with the music or cure or anything. Um, so around 97, the best I could, you know, as far as his relation stuff, ship stuff again, you know, he marries Sarah from what I gathered. It was somewhere around 97 and has uh, two more kids uh, in the upcoming years. Um, Evie in 2000 and Ismay in 2007. So they're pretty young. Um, mm. 
And then it sounds like Sarah passed away. And I didn't, it felt a little creepy and weird just trying to dig into that and find out. But um, so, yeah, that's sad if that happened. But I think that is the case because it comes up again in the sense that uh, people were saying he was dating this Daniela Martin gal who plays in the band Alice Blue Gown. And they come up because we get into the most recent Simon news of the uh, summer. August 14th, 2021, Simon announces on Facebook he's no longer a member of the band. He's tired of the betrayal. And then shortly, or I guess a couple months after that, that's how it all got re-came back up on Facebook again. He posted a picture of playing with Alice Blue Gown, who is this apparently this girl he's dating, Daniela her band so it wasn't like he just was like fuck the cure i'm forming this new band so i think he's been playing with her anyway pre all this announcement stuff um so yeah um i don't know if they have any recordings out there i couldn't find anything that was actual like singles or anything yet but um yeah so and then somebody in the comments said something along oh wait i credited the dude i <laughs> jotted this down <laughs> at one point thomas cregan <laughs> asked so you still in the care or what, man? <laughs> wasn't exactly like that, but uh, he said, you still in the care? And Simon replied, yes, I am. And there you go. And then everybody just let it go after that. <laughs> don't bring it up. <laughs> don't make eye contact with it. Don't acknowledge it. Everything's fine. Go go about your day. And uh, yeah, here he is now getting an award with Robert Smith. And, uh, you know, I guess that catches us up, but... um. Yeah, so a little whirlwind at the end there with his uh, his wild mood swings and, you know, who knows where he stands on anything, but who knows where anybody stands on anything after COVID and what's been going on. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. you know, definitely rocked it hard through the 2016 tour straight into, uh, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And then the festivals tour went off great for the Cure, of course, and uh Simon was definitely on those signs of being pissed about anything on stage. So it's hard to say. I, I think, of course, any turmoil had to have been something that stewed in the off times of COVID. So, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a lot of the facts. I got a couple rando facts that is Reading football club flag hangs on his amp since 20, uh, 2007. On top of that, the only, I didn't really have a ton of songs that were confirmed Simon, you know, like where he had the bulk of the demo where he sent it in. But strangely enough, Love Song is always credited to being a, a Simon song that got the ball rolling. And uh, Robert, of course, took it on and actually made that his wedding present to his wife. So pretty cool that a collaboration was even his wedding song to his wife. So uh, very close to his two nearest and dearest, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Mint Carr, of course, uh, is credited to being a the bulk of Simon, which that bass line is definitely, arguably the coolest part of that song, I think. And um, Club America, I don't know if oh. anybody's oh. really fighting for credit <laughs> on that yeah, one. But <laughs> and uh, in more recent talk with us, High is one that's always credited as a, a Simon demo too. So, um, but I'm sure <laughs> there's tons more, especially yeah. after our, our new found details that we unearthed. In the last 24 hours, <laughs> Simon's been writing all this shit all along, apparently, and uh, Robert just writes the lyrics. So. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we we can't let it pass that he's a big Doctor Who fan. Okay, yeah, yeah, you know, Doctor Who, bad, too. Bad Wolf, written on, uh, you know, on his amp as well. He had that spray painted on his right base cabinets for a while. Um, true, true. So that's, that is a Doctor Who reference. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bicycle. He likes Iron Maiden, apparently. Yeah, he likes Maiden. Yeah. yeah, I think he has some, a little bit. Uh, some some metal in him for sure. Uh, likes bicycling. There's a really cool article where he talks all about that. I didn't really pull too many. Like just his love of biking. Um, sounded like on the tours, even he'll wake up super early and just go out cycling. And uh, Robert's like, "Fuck that!" And stays in. So <laughs> he's <laughs> he's like, clearly, <laughs> Robert's not getting on a bicycle. <laughs> he's like, "I'll Let's make sure in. the ball doesn't go anywhere." <laughs> no, he gets he gets on a three wheeled bicycle that has like the basket on the back. Yeah, you know, like on those old lady bike. <laughs> totally. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, and then that might explain some of the fashion choices too, or the tight pants and the, the pants. You know, comfort, yeah. comfort, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> 
being able to move around good. He does have a couple side project things that are out there. The Evie Vines single, Sabbath, he played on. And there's a, a link to that out there. I believe I've stumbled over the years over these YouTube clips. Um, Beauty and Chaos is another one. L.A.-based guitarist Michael Saravallo. Ring any bells with you guys? I don't know if that's... Um, so that's he, a video, but I was he in the Sopranos? I don't know. Or, yeah, it sounds like <laughs> but, um, Watch, all Italians were in the Sopranos. <laughs> yeah, <man>. go on. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that are good fellows. Yeah. <laughs> Not too many rando facts, but I guess, you know, just as far as our um general love of Simon too, I mean, I think it is just kind of the no brainer of what he brings to the band and looking at that small hiatus period of, you know, you had the the different angles the cure could have gone in if he hadn't returned is a kind of fun question to ponder you know like if he had never come back for head on the door you know would we have just gotten weird one-off pop singles and albums like the top (laughs) for the rest of robert's career or you you wouldn't have love song yeah i'm sure there's tons on there too and there's there's got to be a whole bunch and you know kiss me was pretty notorious one for people bringing in songs so i'm sure there's a ton on there that they were all based off of like, you know, those bass lines. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty crazy to think if, if, you know, Robert does a good job with those bass lines and stuff on the top. But even if Phil had played the bass lines on the top, that might have made that album kind of blow up a little bit more for you guys, yeah. you know, in the sense that it, it's like Robert does a good job with it, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, it's, you know, it doesn't really have the pizzazz. If, if Simon had been playing those bass lines even... Maybe that's why we all kind of love Shake Dog Shake Live, but you know, it's like, you know, obviously the stage presence thing is is huge for the live shows, you know. Um, well, he's also also from a you know musician nerd standpoint, outside of the writing aspect of things, um, <clears throat> he's always played fucking badass basses. Yeah, like you know, uh, I mean, when you like, you know, you can go check out like rig breakdowns and stuff. And yeah, I had all that listed in here too. At one point, yeah, I was like, do we want to go down that road? But uh, yeah, I it's nerds. you know, yeah. there, there are not too many guys that can pull off a Gibson Thunderbird, you know. And I, and I know we kind of mentioned his like yeah, 80s, absolutely. 80s hair metal looking days, but you know, him and Nikki Six like made that bass, yeah, like. You know, there. You know, when you say Gibson Thunderbird, like those are the only two people that that come to mind. Um, and I, I've I've picked one of those bases up before. I've had like the Epiphone version, and it makes me look like a fucking midget. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> you know, gigantic. yeah, um, yeah. It's pretty bad. You know, and his, his 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 bass tone, his his gear, um, simple but but perfect with what he uses. You know, like. Uh, He's a straight up boss effects pedal kind of guy, very like like old school. Yeah, like, same with Robert, where it's all just the yeah, standard. It's 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 like the standard boss stuff, the boss flanger, the boss chorus, the right. the noise suppressor. You know what I mean? Like uh, guys like that, but then still end up with the sounds that they get live. You know, like it's it's something. They have something. They don't need. He doesn't need all the fucking bells and whistles to make it sound that way. Um, you know, he's just, it, you know, not just from what he brought to the to the writing, but uh, I think you know, just even from a gear and sound standpoint. Yeah. I mean, he, even like anytime you listen to anything Cure Live or any bootleg or any video that gets put out, I mean, the fucking bass tone's unreal. Yeah. Like, it really is. It's which is funny because I wrote a quote down here. I wasn't sure if it would fit in anywhere, but this is perfect for it. In the sense that he's so like humble about it too. The sense that yeah, you hear that bass anywhere and you know it's fucking Simon on it, and you know it's like just the way he's hitting it and everything. He says, but his quote. And this was from uh, where was it? Talkbase.com or something like that. It was some interview. Uh, I'll try to track it down. The link to it, but yeah, Talkbase.com. And he said about his tone. I must admit that I never really studied different speakers or anything like that i just tend to plug into whatever is there and mess around until i get something that i like uh just shut up and play it there's no substitute for just playing i go it goes down (laughs) to the original punk rock thing of not really caring what you're playing through honestly i choose a bass mainly because of its shape the tone is secondary nature (laughs) 
So, but I mean, wow. you know, it's, he clearly knows what he's going for. I'm sure. Yeah, but it's he's like, he's got the ear for the sound. Yeah. Like you said he'll plug mm-hmm. into whatever, but <clears throat> and tweak it till he's like, oh, there okay, it is. That's yeah. what I'm hearing. <laughs> totally. But even um, it's funny because we were talking about prayers from Rain uh, a little bit there, and that bass tone in particular, I've been was trying to kind of capture that sound in a new song that I'm working on right now. Uh-huh. And I was like, I, I finally like found something, you know, I plugged the bass in and played it kind of straight. And then I was just adding all the, these different things to it to try to get that. And I was like, that's exactly like kind of what I was like going to attack to try to find, Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and he's definitely one of those guys. I mean, you know, I've been in recording studios where it wasn't even, you know, my band recording and, and the bass player, when they say to the producer, like, you know, like a, a good producer will say to, to a bass player, like, give me a couple songs of, of, you know, sounds that you want so I can hear it. Yeah. And the amount of times that Fascination Street gets put before a producer like to say, <laughs> make my bass sound like that. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. You know, like for me, it was always, it was always, disintegration as an album i'd just be like cool here listen to any song on this that (laughs) capture that you know and bands that i was playing bass on it was it was that and it was you know anything from you know sergey from quicksand quicksand slip and you know um and you know because those are probably my you know my two favorite those are by far my two favorite bass players of all time and uh yeah i mean just his influence on capturing sound uh, you know, not just from, like I said, from a writing standpoint, yeah. his influence on that too is just drastic. I mean, the amount of bass players that have wanted to sound like him yeah. is just insane. So many credits to so many different bands and so many different genres too. Yeah. Because the cure just exceeds a genre. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. when you think of just cool bass lines that he even has in the sense of how it can be something that's just the whole melodic thing in itself just in there or he knows yeah. when to just lay back to and just let it mm-hmm. kind of be super simple i mean a lot of them are like surprisingly simple which is a credit to the writing side or just him not overdoing it you know it's like yeah a few things worse in a band too is like the overdo it bass player you know it's just like boom, 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 play it all oh, over yeah. the fucking place yeah. you're just like <laughs> shut up up, you know? yeah it's, it's like, like cool you know? it's like i respect the shit out of how you can play that thing but uh, yeah like and you're it's... overdoing it man well did did either of you get a chance to um check out the sweet kill yeah yeah so no. did that all right so um I I had uh, Pete Mills uh, of the band Sweet Kill on on the Nobody Speaks podcast, and he does a cover of "Hurt" by Nine Inch Nails on his uh, record, but it is a mashup with the Fascination Street bass line in the cover of "Hurt," and it's fucking amazing. Yeah, because when I first heard it, I was like, "Wait a minute, this is Hurt," and then I was like. But wait a minute, this is that's kind of the fascination sheet baseline. And I was like, I was like, what am I hearing? I was like, I I love this. What is it? Like, you know, and then when I when I interviewed him, he was like, Yeah, he's like, sometimes I I try to sing other songs over great guitar and bass hooks. And I, I just play that. And he's like, that one worked out. And he was like, I'm gonna figure out how to put these together and put it on the album. And it's definitely yeah. one of the coolest things I've ever heard. Yeah. That's cool. It, I mean you know, so definitely check it out. Uh you know, just again a, a testament to to the, you know, how much you know his bass playing you know, and his bass riffs have so memorable so and much. melodic. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can, in the sense, yeah, it's a credit to the fascination street bass lines. Like put it in every song, you know, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's like, you can't not enjoy listening to that bass line. So it's, yeah. Uh, like I, I think about if, if there were just like, if it was just the bass player that played along with like the root notes kind of thing, like boom, 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 but you yeah. know, if you like pulled out, a lot of the bass lines in disintegration and just dropped in like the basic, like just play mm. the note of the chord that's yeah. being played. Ugh. The songs would be drastically fucking different. And in that, that's worked for tons of people on yeah. tons of records on tons of hit songs. But you know, I, I, I would credit, uh, credit so much of disintegration being the masterpiece it is yeah. uh, to, to Simon for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's always that. 
a funny thing about Disintegration where every time you listen to it, you're like, oh, this is the Simon album. And you're like, no, nah, actually, this is the Roger album. You know, just because you yeah. pick apart each little part. You're like, no, well, wait, I mean, Boris that, is that's fucking why, killing yeah, it that's on why, this album. <laughs> it's like, that's no. why it's a perfect record. Yeah. Because we could really, Everybody. you know, any any one or any aspect of that album that you're going to focus on, you're going to be like, yeah, it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, from a production standpoint, from, yeah. you know, the but definitely, are really Arguably, Simon, the, for sure. Yeah. He's, yeah. I mean, you could go on and on. Fucking like crushing you know. it. Yeah. But but again, that's why if somebody tells me that it doesn't even belong in The Cure's top five albums, I'm like, yeah, that's then just, you don't like The Cure. That's just like, absurd. <laughs> You're just trying to yeah. start shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I so badly wanted to call that his name out in the podcast. Uh, just, I love that one be. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> to meet in an alleyway or something. <laughs> yeah, I was like, if I see you in a fucking bar, I'm gonna <laughs> smash a glass on your face. <laughs> yeah, let's uh let's play a game real quick and uh, right. top five bass players. Top bass players? Okay. Yeah. And then Ooh, yeah, five before bass we players. do t- Simon's great, but uh well Simon's gonna be in there for I don't yeah, yeah, so. So, yeah, I guess yeah. top four oh, yeah. then. <laughs> so, so top four yeah, then. Top five. Well, yeah, well, well for me, I already mentioned another one, which would be Sergey. Okay. From, yeah. from Quicksand and Deftones. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, I know we talked about overplaying bass players. The only bass player that I'm okay with overplaying is Flea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot of it's yeah. just the the style and the you know what I mean. Like even Primus, it's like what well, wouldn't be Primus without him fucking bark a bark a bark all over. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> even with the uh, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, um, yeah, but he, but even with uh with, with but, Flea, there's those times where he lays back. Yeah, and he's just kind of like like slow. Even his slow playing is like is really really awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Nate from Sunny Day Real Estate and the Foo Fighters. He's another huge, huge influence uh, for me when I was a bass player. Um, Diary is like one of my favorite bass albums. Exactly. Oh, 100%. The the walking bass lines on that, like do, 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 do. You know, makes that album 100 times better. Oh, my God. I know. I mean, they just announced that they're going to be doing a tour, and unfortunately, he's not playing bass with them, but I mean, he hasn't in in a long time now. And with everything he's kind of going through, um, you know, I definitely Mm. don't blame him on that one. I'm going to give a shout out to the, my, my last number five um, is going to be my buddy, Adam, who was in uh, a band called era type 11. Um, I know there. Yeah. Instruction and, uh, uh, Sasha, uh, and they're, they're doing a reunion coming up, uh, uh as cool. a, ben- a benefit show at, at, uh, St. Vitus. But, uh, yeah, those would be, those would be my top five. Nice. Yeah. What about you, Gavin? Hmm, let's see. Definitely uh Peter Hook in there. Yeah. I'm gonna put him in there. And you know, crazy how much crossover there is, but they definitely got totally different things going on, Simon and Peter Hook. You know, you feel like it could be Oh yeah. Energy, just, personality, oh, yeah. Like all of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he complete. he's definitely in my top ten. But uh yeah, you know. he's you know, just does a lot of cool stuff in same melodic kind of way, um, same stance, I guess. But otherwise, yeah. yeah, they don't really ever reference each other, though. Or I don't know if it's just one of those things that's not cool to say, but, as he, you know, it's never Simon's never yeah. been like, yeah, totally dig. <laughs> Which I'm sure he, yeah. you know, loves Joy Division and everything, too. But at the same time, it's, uh, yeah. I so. can't wait to fucking see them. New Order. Yeah, you got, you're going to go see them. They yeah, we're going to see them when they play here in Brooklyn. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to see them again. I only ever saw them once in the way early 90s, like for Republic tour way back in. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was, mm. uh, yeah they, it was good. It was, it was, they were playing this big pavilion thing. So it was just, you know, they've gotten better over the years, actually. So now, so, <laughs> minus not having Peter Hook with them sucks, but yeah. at the same time. And he's great too. I saw him doing this Peter Hook in the Light thing. Yeah, so did I. He was excellent. Yeah, I was. Totally blown away. I didn't think I'd enjoy that. I was like, he's kind of just in a cover band of himself. That's a little weird, but uh, you you get over it real quick. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. (laughs) uh, uh, Who else? Let's see. Um, You know, yeah, kind of like the ones that just kind of lay back, you know. Um, uh, John Sterrett, I think it is, is of uh, Wilco. Always does a good job of just adding cool bass lines and shutting up singing harmonies is good too you know nice plus but uh 
So yeah, any of those dudes, I don't even remember his name, um, from Velocity Girl as a kid. I always loved this band Velocity Girl from DC and they just had like really fucking cool bass lines and layers to all their stuff that was just kind of cool indie rock. So yeah, uh, I'm trying to think there's got to be a billion I'm blanking on now, but <laughs> what about you while I pod there? Anybody? Have- I am yeah. going to go with Peter Hook also. Yeah. Um, He's, I, I absolutely love, I, I don't think if he was in um, New Order I, that I would really have gotten into them as much as I did. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, and then I'm going to put uh, Jerry Only. And uh, wow, without okay. him, I don't I don't think we have the misfits as yeah, the, as, yeah, 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 you yeah. gotta credit Jerry. Um, no, fuck yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, Matt Freeman of Rancid because I think he's one of the best punk bass players ever. His work on the first Rancid album blew like absolutely blew me away. Um, the way he just like shreds and just like he's he's all over the place yeah um and he he does he does fing, uh finger picking too sometimes which is insane with how much he he just goes up and how down. much he plays yeah yeah um and then lastly hmm. oh, man. <laughs> i don't want to go with flea just because i'm i'm not the biggest um um uh, red hot chili peppers fan so i'm going to go with kim deal Ooh, it's funny. Cookie. I was just gonna yeah, say I had. To, I was gonna give an honorable mention because I, 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 you, you read literally read my fucking mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, it's a good one deal. for sure. Yeah, gigantic. Yeah. Added so much. Yeah, just all around. There's some great yeah. ones in there. Yeah, yeah. and I gotta so. agree with with Simon even on uh, Paul Simeon there from the Clash. There's a lot of fucking cool Clash bass lines for sure. Yeah, so I think yeah, that, yeah. That would yeah. Be I mean, there's so many of like. I mean, you go Daryl Jennifer with Bad Brains, just, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's like the speed at which he played is, you know, like set the bar. Yeah. And, you know, then uh, Klaus Floride of, you know, the Dead Kennedys and even, uh, I mean, Mike Watt. Like, Mike, they, no, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, even Mike a big, Watt. I'm not even a big Minuteman fan, but like, yeah, he's just fun to watch. Mike, and... Mike Watt. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, so, yeah, I was gonna say that like I'm not a Green Day guy, but you can't deny Durant's like, yeah, influence in bass playing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he's he's up there, and like I found it amazing that like a lot of the bass players that we mentioned have so many like connections to punk. Yeah, and just that speed and you know passion that yeah like, i think you kind of yeah, you kinda have don't, to don't have tommy um forget the stint from uh the replacements tommy stinson oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, we started we started yeah, off like yeah. talking about the replacements but then a lot of that's so. like if you just love the song and the band you know you're gonna love the bass player and that but he he added up so much you know there's a lot of cool shit in there for sure um, but um yeah oh da- oh darcy uh darcy yeah <laughs> kim yeah. kim gordon from sonic Sonic, Sonic Youth, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah not, not even that big of a Sonic Youth fan, but I mean, yeah, it's, like it's female cool rock star. And, you know, oh yeah, just... she she's she's up there. Like you know, um, when you when you think of like the big female rock stars, when you think of your blondies and stuff like that, yeah. like she's fucking right there. Uh, yeah. So. Um, I guess yeah. what about our boy Simon? Do we have f- favorite Simon bass lines? Uh, it's top fives. I mean, I knew you were gonna ask that. <laughs> oh. Well, Got I, two I was, more hours. This I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but I did that. Yeah, that, you uh, did. Your... Best of Simon Gallup episode of Fascination Street podcast. Yeah, and I still have that my playlist up on Spotify. Cool. It's like twenty four songs. Yeah. It's just called the Best of Simon Gallup. Um. And uh, God, I mean, I don't, I don't have them in any particular order, but I'll just read you off a couple yeah, of them. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, obviously, Fascination Street. Um, it's like favorite Cure um, songs where up, it rotates. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, apart that bass line yeah. and apart, uh, you know, um, the Hanging Garden wouldn't be the Hanging Garden without that bass line. Yeah. Um, just like Heaven might be one of the most recognizable bass lines of all time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I can't tell you how many shows i've been to where not me or someone in my band but i've heard people rip that 
bass line as their sound check when the bass player and the, oh, yeah. When yeah. The, you know yeah. Yeah. i mean it's just unbelievable um uh what uh what else is on here i got uh e i mean even their arguably not arguably even their worst album <laughs> even what, like what, what's, he gonna, worst say, album? what's he gonna say <laughs> i'm gonna go uh, it's self-titled yeah, okay yeah. okay uh, uh but but even the the baseline on us or them is great you know yeah. like if you if you're like sifting through to try to find bright notes that's one of them yeah um why can't i be you uh god sinking you know yeah. i mean like i said i can read off all 23 but those those are some of my standouts <laughs> you know uh, like for sure well that's a crossover like, chess it's i mean it's got to be sinking uh fascination street i fell in love with simon with fascination street yeah. and uh disintegration is yeah. is pr i would when i saw the last two time did they play it? no the last time i saw them I watched him the whole entire song for disintegration. Yeah, it's it's like it's it's it's, it's a weird one too because it's just like perfect. not a lot going on, but that's so hard to keep that like steady yeah. and like fucking yep. robotic. But it's just yep. like oh, dang, it's dang, 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 yeah, just, but even I mean, as you guys remember, like in my origin story, Fascination Street is like how I learned how to play. Yeah, bass. that's mm. playing along with the Cure is what turned me from guitar player to bass player, just so I could join a band that I loved that needed a bass player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Forest Live, of course, and is yeah. up there. Um, uh, sinking is so good. Yeah. Um, uh, even uh, I mean, even some B side stuff like uh, a foolish arrangement. How beautiful you are. Yeah, uh, I love the bass in that. Even Halo uh, has that cool just groove to it. Doom, doom, do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah. What, what about a letter to Elise? Yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. Uh, even that, even like, yeah, I mean, I've even kind of mentioned of like ones that aren't like, you know, I mean, just like Kevin even falls into that where it's like, there's nothing musicianship staggeringly wonderful about it, but it's just such a fucking cool, just, you yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. like that letter to at least pictures of you even. It's like, it's nothing crazy going on, but like he's yeah. just fucking nails it and it sounds so I, good, I'm, you know, that's like. I have a feeling you're going to say Friday, I'm in love. Nah, I, I really? like the guitar part better you, on that. I, I, I mean, it's cool. You, oh, okay. Mint Carr would be my line. one in that That's kind of vein. Where yeah. Mint Carr definitely has a red bass line that isn't necessarily what you think of when you think of Mint Carr. You know, it's like always mm -hmm. that down there, but like the bass lines that it's like really. What do you have? Um, I had uh, Faith the song is a fucking cool bass line okay. um, and other voices too I'm not sure anyone's said that one yet but that's no that absolutely not I did not say that one either that, yeah. that didn't come to my mind yeah that's a cool one um, love song too even it's just fucking great you know that whole bass line to that song is just yeah, I mean cause that song is one that you could just strum the chords and it's still mm -hmm. a beautiful awesome song but then that bass line just really makes it awesome uh, the holy hour. The song has a cool bass line. <laughs> Not the <laughs> podcast, <laughs> and, uh, and close to me too is a cool one. It just says, I was gonna say dun, that dun, one, dun, but dun, I, dun, I, dun, I don't know. I love that song, but it's just like, well, like I, I don't know. It's too catchy for. Yeah, I mean, for, it's just for, a cool, for me for for him. Yeah. fun groove, you know. It's like yeah. get up there oh, and and, uh, and also cut. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah all those rocking ones are great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean. Goes or a doubt. And... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Primary. Oh, there's really cool. Oh, yeah. But... <laughs> but yeah, we're on like our, what, 80th song on the playlist then if we were all compiling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many good ones. But uh, so yeah, I don't know. How, how do we wrap up by saying happy birthday to this amazing musician? Seems like an all around cool dude. Um you know, I don't think it ever. Hopefully. I mean, Robert's gone on the record. I think that's why we all freaked out as hard as we did last summer. And the, the there is no cure without Simon, really. Yeah. And I think there is a lot yeah. to that. And we all kind of knew it. That's why we freaked out. I think because uh, I mean, this is a you know, I mean, it's. I'm glad we're doing this after that little drop because even when we said we were going to do this episode, and he said he's back in the band and all that other stuff, the fact that you know we still 
kind of didn't know what happened or what was going to happen. Yeah. The fact that the two of them went out on a stage within the last 24 hours, accepted a, an award together, yeah. took a fucking picture together, <laughs> were smiling, were being goofy. Yeah. Uh, just uh, just kind of solidifies to me and has given me a little bit of hope of, uh, of, of of future and future albums and tours. Yeah. You know, because like I said, yeah, it, without him... I could see this album even getting scrapped and us not getting them. And then just yeah. it either fizzles away or we get a different reincarnation in five years and we got some weird ass record yeah. that none of us want to hear. Right. Yeah. So, totally. yeah. um, I think, uh, you know, you know, we're solidifying a, a pretty solid, you know, foundation that is Simon Gallup to the cure, you know? Totally. Yeah. I think, uh, it's hard to, I mean, there's plenty of bands where they all hate each other and they still just get up and do it. Do but it. I think yeah. they're not, uh, I don't really buy that they would do that, you know, or at least yeah. be standing next to each other in a awards assembly and it wouldn't come up that, yeah, I'm not even playing on this tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. Would be kind of, Thanks for the award. Enjoy your tour, yeah, asshole. this band. Yeah. Tired of the betrayal, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, imagine he just pissed. turns around and whatever shirt he's wearing, it says betrayal. Yeah. On the back yeah. Of it. <laughs> no, he's still pissed. <laughs> I... I would think it was fun. I think it's funny if uh, if Simon was living with Robert now just to get the album done. Yeah, and like this is all part <laughs> of it. Uh, like he's just like, dude, yeah. I'm going everywhere with you, and or, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's like a, yeah, he's his like chauffeur, a chauffeur, sponsor kind yeah, of thing yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's like uh, he's grabbing his groceries from the grocery store, bringing them back, yeah. putting them away. He's like, you're working on it? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Let me make you some more tea. <laughs> I just need a little longer nap. No, wake up. <laughs> so, making him ride, ride a bike in the morning with him. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Oh, yeah. I guess and a good... Sweating everywhere. A fun yeah. birthday <laughs> tradition to wrap up. Other people that were born on June 1st, we got... Oh, uh, Tom Holland, the Spider Man boy, um, <laughs> Spider Man boy, <laughs> Morgan Freeman, everybody's favorite, Ooh. uh, Marilyn Monroe, and Amy Schumer, and Alanis Morissette. <laughs> That's ironic. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mike White's wife, the guest that I just had on the episode that hasn't come out yet, and at the time of our recording this, he said his wife <laughs> shares a birthday. So shout Very out nice. to her. And uh, one right. day before my my oldest brother Marshall, his birth birthday's on uh, June second. So almost Marshall, but not quite as cool as Simon. almost Marshall. <laughs> almost <laughs> should have just come out one day earlier. You would have been the same as Simon. But uh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, like I told you guys, my my friend's daughter was born, you know, two minutes too late for being on uh, Robert's birthday. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> also, also, I'd like to add that yeah. David Berkowitz was also born on on, uh, on this birthday. Yeah, oh, son of Sam. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. That was a fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you did. I, did. I went with the first People magazine article that popped up when I Googled it. So I'm sure there's many more out there. <laughs> Brigham Young, yeah. the, the, one of the founders of the LDS Church. Oh, wow. That's always uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Hail Satan. So. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just going through everything and I'm just like, fuck. Oh, ugh, terrible ugh, people. Yeah. Terrible <laughs> people. No. Uh, I'm just. I just picked all the cool ones, man. <laughs> I the, am picking the, the cool ones. What are you talking about? Jeez. Yeah. Uh, Who's cooler than the son of Sam, right? <laughs> I guess while well, Chaz is seeing if we left anybody out on the record here from the future, congratulations to Antonio for his wedding. <laughs> so I want to say on the record, congrats in advance, Antonio, on your wedding that's coming up. Thank but you. Thank by you. the time this congratulations. airs, congratulations, you will have you'll be married, man. So. So there you yeah. go. Yes. So, Second time's a charm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, any last uh, ones you want to contribute there, Chaz? Any last birthday boys uh, or girls? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Brandy Carlisle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's the actor good Brian Cox. Mm. Uh, Johnny Pemberton, who's one of my favorite comedians going right now. Mm. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. All right. This is the real Christmas. There. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. We got them all. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, on that note, I hope we did it justice. All of you guys out there, be sure to let me know all the facts that I screwed up with reading through the... Uh, <laughs> and, and you guys, thanks for listening to me ramble through his timeline there. I tried to, to blaze through it and not dwell on any area of the history that we've heard a billion times, but... You know, did good, good Thanks. summation. I like that. Hey, just so I learned some in. stuff. So yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah. we'll get that bio from Simon at some point. That he'd be the surprise, biggest surprise I think out of the care if he put out my memoirs, Simon. Gale. Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this would be yeah. awesome. But uh, so maybe if we all encourage him enough, maybe he'll do that. So uh, until then. We look forward to seeing those bass lines in the fall and uh, whatever the hell's on these records that we'll, we'll hear one day. And those uh, tight, tight pants. And and hope those pants just those keep sausages. getting tighter. Yeah. <laughs> those bangers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe uh, maybe Kate can make some of the, some tight polka dotted Simon pants for us all to buy. Yeah, some, some Cure Threads pants. Yeah. <laughs> like With a cucumber good. wrapped in tinfoil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Chaz, we need that fool's dance shirt. I think it's time. I'm, I, I think I'm going to do one. All right. <laughs> so it'll sell like 10 of them. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. yeah. Yeah. Again, thank you guys. And uh, thanks for listening out there. And we'll sign off with a big happy birthday to Simon. Woo-hoo. And, happy uh, birthday, Simon. Yeah. Happy birthday, homie. Yeah, you're a party <laughs> damn feller. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we'll say talk hard. again a very special thank you to Chaz and Antonio and to you guys for listening and to Simon Gallup for being born and all the wonderful music he has written and played and shared with us throughout his years on the planet Uh, be sure to subscribe to the Holy Hour podcast on Apple and Spotify and YouTube and check out our Instagram page at the Holy Hour podcast and uh, the Facebook page where you can chime in and add comments to each episode or just write me directly at gavinconnor at gmail.com. All right, we'll catch you in two weeks with more Cure Talk. Go put on some of your favorite Simon tunes and rock on out. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right, guys. I'm gonna go to bed.